I get what he's trying to say, Chad. Okay, okay, okay. Let me run that back. Uh-oh. I'll beat Donald Trump. I will beat him again in 2020. Just sucks because it says it right there. Like, it's right there. You know what I mean? Like, look at what my mouse is, my mouse cursor is, like, pointing to. And it's just, like, you can't really, you can't even be like, oh, no, he was in M Madison in 2020. Like, just, uh, oh, God. Well, by the way, we're going to do it again in 2024. Yeah. I learned. <laughs> Safe. He saved it. Dude, he saved it. He saved it. Nobody, nobody heard him. Nobody heard him the first time, dude. We're so f cooked. Yeah, I'm always thinking it's 2020, dude. Always. I'm I'm constantly thinking about how it's 2020 right now. Ay, ay, ay. That's a real Biden win right there, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, get ready for that, which is already happening. Many of you already knew Biden had moments like this all the time. The problem is... The media wasn't like covering it as much, but now that the narrative is that Biden is old, you're going to hear a lot the latest on president. a lot more of that shit, including Joe Biden accidentally says he's the first black woman to serve in the White House audio like that is a regular mistake. Dare I say a gaffe. He misspoke. But the problem is, while you would normally overlook such a thing for anyone else, because we listened to this yesterday. While you would normally overlook this as like a one-off, who cares, or a two-off, a three-off, when it becomes a 10,000 off over the course of like the past, you know, decade at this point, almost decade, and it reaches a tipping point where the media starts paying attention to it and it, the narrative sets in, it's over. Every single outlet is going to be endlessly covering this until Joe Biden drops out because he's going to keep having moments like this. Okay. We already know he's been having moments like this. We know because we've been watching and making fun of Biden for a while now. Why is the guardian doing this? Because everyone else is doing it. This is the media narrative, which it makes sense that it's the media narrative because it's the truth, right? Did you watch the audio clip? It isn't as bad as it's written out, but still awful. I know I did. I did watch the audio clip, which is why I'm saying that wasn't that big of a gaffe in general especially if you're like familiar with Brandon's uh, real bad moment. Like that one is not even that bad. That's like Trump would say something like that. And then the media would troll him for a little bit. Okay. The narrative is also getting clicks. It adds tension to the story. Exactly. Anyway, uh, I just want to show you guys a real Biden win though. <laughs> the media was looking for off the cuff, powerful moments. And when president Biden delivers, they ignored it. Retweets. So all Americans see this powerful clip and call the media out on their bullshit. A Biden win is him speaking uninterrupted for one minute and 27 seconds. That's a Biden win now. Remember that famous expression? Hold on. They also serve who only stand and wait. I remember when our son was deployed, my wife would go to the stand in the sink in the morning, drinking her coffee and saying that prayer, worrying, worrying, always concerned. And all of you, so we owe you. This could not be done without the family support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you and I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. You got me, man. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. All right. All right. I'll come back out when they let to open the gate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One last thing. You know, I used to think when I was a senator, there, was, there were always congestion on the highways. There's no congestion anymore. No, we go on the highway. There's no congestion. And so what the way they get me to stop talking, they'll say, we just shut down all the roads, Mr. President. You're going to lose all the votes if you don't get in. But anyway, I'll be back out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Is he trying to be Trump? Bro's trying to be Trump, dude. That is a, such a Trumpism. He's trying to be Trump. I swear to God, he's going orange. He's right wing on immigration. His f of a son is now inside of the White House. Okay. And now he's doing Trump memes like, oh, yeah, you know, the highways are no longer uh, as congested, which, by the way, what crack are you smoking on, dumbass? It's not congested for you because you're the president. The idea that we do not experience traffic in America any longer is so stupid. I'm losing my mind. Does he think that, like, there's no more traffic? That was the bit, Hassan. I think he was trying to make a joke. Chat, stop coping and saying that it's not that bad. No, that's not the joke, man. That's not the joke. The joke is 
The joke is the highways are only congested when he's blocking traffic. That joke only works if highways are not actually congested. Anyway, it's also a really stupid joke. I know it's the motorcade. Oh, my God. I get what he's trying to say, Chad. Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> I'm going to run it back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One last thing. You know, I used to think when I was a senator, there, was, there were always congestion on the highways. There's no congestion anymore. No, we go on the highway, there's no congestion. And so what, the way they get me to stop talking, they'll say, we just shut down all the roads, Mr. President. You're going to lose all the votes if you don't get in. But anyway, I'll be back out. Thank you. I did not misunderstand. I think the joke only works if the premise is that, like, we have fixed traffic congestion in the highways, and they're trying to, they always try to get me to go out quicker, because now that highway traffic congestion is fixed, I'm blocking the highways. Nah, bro, the joke misunderstood you. No, I feel like he's saying, like, highway highways are no longer as congested as it used to be back in the days, so now the only time when people feel congestion is when I'm blocking the goddamn roads, and that's why I'll lose the election if I keep doing that. That's the joke that he was trying to make. Anyway, the whole point is, whether that joke lands or not, that's not a Biden win. The reason why I clicked on that to show you was because that's how far we've fallen, okay? Here in the United States of America, we have fallen so far. We have fallen off so poorly, so abysmally, that, like, the Biden wins account is posting a 1 minute and 27 second sequence of Biden talking without a teleprompter as a W, Okay. Anyway, Senator Mark Warner is attempting to assemble a group of Democratic senators to ask Joe Biden to exit the presidential race, according to two people with direct knowledge of his effort. Warner is telling Democratic senators that Biden can no longer remain in the election in the wake of his faltering debate performance, according to the people familiar with private conversations who spoke on the condition of anonymity to speak freely. Though no sitting Democratic senator has publicly called for Biden to step aside, they're privately sharing mounting concerns with each other over the past week as they fight an already uphill battle to maintain Senate majority. I think it's pretty crazy that, like, they're hyping up this ABC interview. Like, they're going nutty over this ABC interview. It's like, what difference does it make? It's literally, an, it's literally a one-to-one -one interview. He's done those before. He can squeeze out, especially, especially when the interview is done in the morning, or at least before 4 p.m. when he starts sundowning. He can squeeze out a goddamn interview. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Just two months from the first vote by mail ballots going out, the question is, will Joe Biden be on those ballots? By the end of the weekend, we could have an answer. As we speak, President Biden is on his... Dude, why are they... Why is the media saying, like, by the end of this week, we could have the answer? As in, like, this ABC interview is going to make it or break it. He already had his make it or break it moment, and he broke it. We were all there. We watched it. That's the reason why this coverage is happening. It's broke, bro. It's broke. White old man gets so many second chances. No shot. To be fair, I think they said the interview would be unedited. Then film it live. Like, what? Film it and release it live. What are we talking about, dude? Like, oh, it, it won't be edited. Okay, sure, dude. Yeah. Senior administration official confirmed on call with reporters about a solo press conference will take place next Thursday afternoon. Yeah, he's running the clock. They literally are just going, oh, yeah, I'll do another thing that you guys want me to do. Okay, I'll do a press conference in front of a contentious media next Thursday. And the reason why he's doing that is because every week that passes makes it all that more uh, like all the more less likely for him to be off the ballot. OK, he is trying to crawl not towards the finish line being November 5th. He's trying to crawl to the convention, which is so f gross. Once people recognize that reality, I suspect they'll be a little bit more angry. I don't think people have noticed that yet. I've been saying this now since the debate. He is literally trying to desperately get to the convention so it becomes a matter of like, it's not even a question at that point. Because every day that passes by where Joe Biden is still the nominee and doesn't drop out makes it all the less likely that someone else will replace him. If he actually wanted to genuinely address these conspiracies and, and basically disparage them as nothing but rumors, he would be doing a press conference the next morning and being like, yeah, you guys are crazy. I mean, yeah, I had a bad debate. It's whatever. It happens. Here I am. Go ahead. Ask me questions. And then he would do more appearances immediately after. Biden asked about Senator Mark Warner, want him to step aside. President Biden responded, he's the only one. No, he's not the only one.
because I've been here before and I've gotten more done than any president has. Have you spoken to members of Congress? No, was, uh, Dude, what planet is he living on? Like, he literally thinks he's gangbusters? Like, what's happening here? You have to be demented to think that, like, your shit is so hot right now. Like, oh, I got a lot more done than any other president. It's like, where is this ego coming from, old man? What the f are you saying right now? It's actually kind of crazy that he's just, like, genuinely delusional and thinks that the situation is great for him. I did so much. I did so much. You cast me aside in 2020. You 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 wrote me off on 2022. It's like, bitch, you weren't on the ballot in 2022. What the f*** are you talking about? Okay, but how should he be acting? I understand what you mean, but it's not like you should be publicly crying. He should be dropping out, dude. What are you talking about? He shouldn't be like being... He shouldn't be operating like this fake, phony, tough guy act. He should be dropping out. That's how he should be acting. He should go up to the first microphone he sees and says i am no longer running for president and i will not accept the nomination even if the party elects me or appoints me as the presidential candidate that's what he should be doing